Welcome to another Bandology interview. Bandology is a Canadian nonprofit dedicated to more music for more kids via education, collaboration, and community. Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. My name is Mary Rose, and I'm the advocacy and policy coordinator here at Bandology. Today, I'm here with Merritt Stiles, the MPP for Davenport and critic of education. How are you doing today, MPP Stiles? I'm great. The sun is shining. It's pretty warm outside, but uh, I'm feeling pretty good today, I gotta say. Mm -hmm. Awesome, good to hear. Um, before we get into the bulk of this interview, I'd like to start off with a land acknowledgement. Halton, as we know it today, is rich in the history and modern traditions of many First Nations and the Métis, from the lands of the Anishinaabe to the Ottawan Deren, the Haudenosaunee, and the Métis, these lands surrounding the Great Lakes are steeped in Indigenous history. As we gather today on these treaty lands, we are in solidarity with, solidarity with our Indigenous brothers and sisters to honour and respect the four directions. Lands, waters, plants, animals, and ancestors that walked before us, and all of the wonderful elements of creation that exist. We acknowledge and thank the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation for being stewards of this traditional territory. So prior to being elected to provincial office for Davenport in 2018, Marit was a Toronto District School Board trustee. And prior to this, she was also the National Director of Public Policy and Research for ACTRA, where she worked to strengthen Canada's arts and cultural sector and served as the board member at Toronto Foundation for Student Success. A passionate advocate for public education, arts and culture, and a longtime community activist, Marit is committed to ensuring schools in Ontario have the resources they need to foster strong communities to help students succeed. So um, today, let's chat about a little bit about music and arts education. I'm just going to ask you um, a few questions, and then at the end of them all, we have some fast five fun questions to answer. All right. Fun. Good. Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> So the first question is briefly describe your current positions. Okay, well, I'm the member of provincial parliament for the riding of Davenport, which is uh, located in the downtown West End of Toronto. Uh, it's where I've lived most of my life now and certainly my entire life in Davenport in, uh, in Toronto uh, since I moved here from uh, Newfoundland many years ago oh. uh, where I raised my my kids yeah I raised uh, I've got two two daughters one of whom is still in public school and I'm also by the way the official opposition critic for education which kind of means I'm like the shadow minister of education. So um, Andrea Horvath, the NDP leader in Ontario, uh, appointed me to that role. And it's, it's kind of my job to keep a close eye on what's happening with our province's uh, publicly funded education system, what's working, what's not, and uh, and also to look at how we can make improvements. Uh, and and as well to, you know, it's not called critic for nothing, to, mm -hmm. to call out the government when they aren't acting in the best interests of, of students and education workers. Awesome. And I just want to let you know you're doing a great job at that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. That's awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's a privilege. It's a real privilege. It definitely is. Mm -hmm. Uh, my next question is, what are your top three career highlights? So I think my top three career highlights, the first one is when I was a, a school board trustee at the Toronto District School Board. Um, and uh, there was a real movement for many years um, uh, from by, by parents and students and educators, particularly Black youth and Black educators um, who'd been demanding for years uh, that the school, what they call the school resource officer program, which is was really like kind of permanently placed police officers in schools, in some high schools, um, they were trying to to stop that program to uh, because for because they, they saw it and I think rightly so as part of what people have called the prison to uh, the school to prison pipeline. And I came in, you know, as a school board trustee and realized that one of the things I could do was help move that forward. So I was, uh, I was able to bring forward a motion that took those that program out of our high schools. And I think it was a, a really big moment in, in Toronto, but it's, it's now spread to other regions and other, of course, big conversation in a yeah. lot of 
North America. Uh, the other thing would probably be when I was president uh, for of the federal NDP for a few years, um, and I got to announce the results of the leadership election when Jagmeet Singh was elected, and that was very exciting. It was a big moment, I think, in Canada, generally, whatever your politics. And um, and then I think the other thing was, yeah, like being appointed as the education critic um, for the NDP after I was elected MPP in 2018, because, you know, it's definitely a passion of mine and um, uh, public, public education. And it's been a real privilege um, to bring, I think, like the voices of students and youth, especially into the legislature. Mm -hmm. so I'm very, I'm very, uh, I'm very, I feel very privileged to have that role. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, thank you so much for answering that question. Yeah, no problem. Um, my next question is, so you're someone who advocates for change through things like the No Hybrid Phones app you hosted with MPP Jessica Bell, which I attended. It was great um, in June and for the improvement of Ontario's education system. Um, so my question is, what lessons have you learned about being an advocate for strong public education in Ontario? Well, I guess, you know, and that phone zap is a good example, um, mm -hmm. which is really just getting people together uh, for anybody who's listening and doesn't know. Uh, we got everybody together on Zoom and said, OK, tonight we're all going to make calls to the premier or the education minister. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's who we called that night. But anyways, and, and, you know, we all kind of practice the script and we talk about the issue and then we get out there and we do it. And it's kind of, it's kind of nice to have that experience as a group, especially for people who haven't um, done it before. It gives you a little extra confidence too. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess, so, so it all matters. Um, it seems sometimes when you're advocating for a cause, like strong public education, like you're shouting into a, a black hole. But every single call, every email, every petition that you sign, and every conversation you have, it really matters. And so I think um, the important thing is don't underestimate the impact that even those really simple things can have. Because um, I can tell you as an elected politician now, uh, we watch these things closely. It has an impact and, and don't give up on it. Build the connections. Social media is a great tool to reach like-minded people. And you know, at the end of the day, it really is about building a movement and organizing. Uh, that's really the key to, to change. Awesome. Thank you so much for that advice. No problem. Um, my next question to you um, is, why do you think music education is important? Mm -hmm. Um, well, I come from a family of educators. I mean, my mother was a teacher for some of her professional life. My father was a professor for a part of the time. Um, my mother-in-law was a music teacher for many, many years and then was a professor in education. So mm -hmm. I don't know, it's something I feel very strongly about actually. And in my family, we feel strongly about, um, mm -hmm. but look, I mean, we know that music improves, um, self-confidence in students. It, it gives you better focus mm -hmm. and there are lots of transferable skills. And by the way, I love bandology's uh, motto. Music isn't just for one career, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's training for all of them. I think that kind of sums it up, but you know, so I think there's all kinds of great reasons like that, um, that we know, and there's so much research out there to support it. But most of all, uh, you know, we shouldn't underestimate the importance of joy in our lives. Um, that music brings, um, you know, you see it in the faces of the smallest little people, <laughs> you know, and little children or um, mm -hmm. the joy of just lifting your voice or making noise or feeling the beat. Um, music, movement, it all brings joy. And I think in this pandemic, we have certainly learned, you know, how incredibly important that is. And that, that social interaction is also really critical. For sure. Well, I didn't know your um, you had music educators in your family. That's super cool. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it is. I mean, more on my my partner side of of our family, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, lots of music on both sides, and um, definitely a passion for music education. That's awesome. Um, my next question to you is what advice can you give on how to effectively bring about change, either for parents advocating for more music in schools or for the environment or other issues? 
Well, um, you know, I kind of, when I was talking about some of the tools that people can use and, and I, and again, like going back to that, I hear from a lot of people, um, you know, just on the doorstep, on phones, um, a lot of skepticism, a lot of cynicism about politics and about um, uh, political leadership. Uh, and it, you can be really frustrated and tired of it sometimes when you're trying to make change. And um, I get it because I think that people have been let down a lot uh, by politicians who make promises and don't live up to them or by an electoral system actually that gives you know majority parties full reign to do whatever they want. And, and so my advice is um, don't give up. We need to hold our elected officials, people like me, uh, to a higher standard. We need to demand more and we need to demand better. And that starts um, with local school board trustees up to city councilors and MPPs and members of parliament. It really matters who we elect mm -hmm. um, locally. So get involved, invite them to your school, ask them to speak to your parent council, uh, don't take no for an answer and uh, and but don't get frustrated. Um, you know, it, it's if we if we let cynicism kind of set in, uh, then we're never going to really make change. Yep, I agree. Um, and that was a great response. Thank you. Um, my next. I've been thinking question. about it a lot lately. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially with the election coming up. Yeah, yeah, and and actually that that cynicism piece. I was just watching a video where um, Jagmeet was talking about that issue, and I really it really hit home for me. Mm -hmm. And your mention of the electoral system, that's definitely a big thing. <laughs> right? It's yeah. it's so frustrating. I feel like people are feel like they when we get a majority government, which is you know most of the time, people kind of go, ugh, like now they don't even have to listen to us. And it it's a good example of why you do need to think as well about who your opposition is. Yep. You know, like I hear a lot of people, I mean, I don't want to get into a whole federal election thing, but I hear a lot of people saying, you know, well, at the end of the day, it's only going to be this party or this party that can actually form government. And while that, you know, sometimes is true, it, it still doesn't, it, it, it really is important that you have those other voices and yep. you have strong voices and also that you have good local representation. Yeah. For sure, 100%. Um, my next question is, what is the NDP doing to push the government to create a better safe reopening plan for school in light of the new lackluster plan that fails to protect students in Ontario classrooms? Yeah, well, good question. Um, you know, because some schools are back um, as of the time we're, we're recording this interview and, and there's more schools going back um, next week, a lot more, most students will go back next week mm -hmm. uh, after Labor Day. And, um, you know, my fear and our fear is that um, you, know, you can reopen schools in this moment, but if we don't invest enough and put the supports in place and protections in place that are necessary, mm -hmm. then we won't be able to keep them safely open. And in Ontario, uh, over the last year and a half, well, actually over the last year, schools were closed for 26 weeks, which is the most days closed of any jurisdiction in Canada and one of the worst records in, in North America and the world. And um, that's shameful. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the answer, and I, it's, it's actually kind of frustrating again, <laughs> but we're not gonna get cynical. We're gonna keep pushing. Uh, it, you know, are the same kinds of issues we talked about a lot. We, we, we know we've learned a lot more about how COVID is spread. Um, we know we're dealing with variants. We know we have a large um, part of the student population that are not eligible yet for vaccination. Mm -hmm. So we need to push for those smaller, safer classes. We need to push for more outdoor options, which really means also supporting teachers and school boards to be able to make sure that can happen. Mm -hmm. We need to really listen to the science, the best science on ventilation and testing of air quality and exchange. Um, I'm not an expert, but there are lots of experts out there and we are not meeting the standard that other jurisdictions are meeting and that's there's no excuse for it. Um, we need paid sick days so yeah. that when somebody is sick in a family, um, the parent can, can stay home with the child or can stay home when they're ill um, so that we're not continuing to spread um, COVID and, and these new variants. Yeah, and we need to 
continue to keep pushing for this. Just because school is coming back doesn't mean that there is an opportunity to still do more and we need to keep the pressure up on the government. And we're gonna keep doing that um, outside of the legislature and when the legislature returns on September 13th. Mm -hmm. That was a great response. I'm, I'm glad to hear that great things are being done and hopefully things change. Yeah, hopefully. And I, I gotta say too, like I, it's been a, it's been a tough year and a half two years almost. And, and I really, it's been really great to see students, uh, youth, um, parents, education workers, everybody coming together, calling for a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, yeah, a, a big concern of music parents, especially now, is that obviously the government is allowing it to happen, but that's great, but there aren't enough safeguards in place, um, especially um, there's, it's probably not going to be possible to distance in classrooms, ventilation still needs to be improved, um, and other safeguards like bell peppers for instruments have not been um, invested into, um, so that's, it's definitely a concern for music parents going forward. Um, my next question as a follow-up to that one is, as parents who support a return to safe singing and playing in classrooms throughout Ontario, Clear guidelines have not been giving, given, and there has been a failure to address air quality in schools, which will impact music students and students engaging in close contact sports unmasked. What needs to be done to push the government to create a plan that will keep schools open and safe for students? And what should parents do in light of the announcement of this plan? Yeah, it's, um, well, look, I mean, the whole thing is deeply problematic and mm -hmm we're getting what I would call like a, a bargain basement plan. And, and that's kind of been this government's approach to everything throughout, right? Is, mm -hmm. is save a few bucks here and there instead of doing what you really need to do, which is go big, invest in a serious way, cover off all of these issues that we just talked about mm -hmm. and, um, and they haven't done it. And, you know, I look at what uh, private schools uh, with lots of money are doing and what schools in some other jurisdictions like New York City are doing. And I don't understand why all of our kids here in Ontario aren't considered worthy of that kind of gold standard plan um, because the guidance is there. The experts are clear. We can do more, we should do more. And um, I would say, you know, one of the critical pieces of all of this is transparency and reporting and, you know, we're not seeing that from the government. And I think we should be asking ourselves why they don't want to provide that. Mm -hmm. um, we, we know boards, you know, school boards, I will say, are, are, are I think, generally really trying their best um, mm -hmm. and, and to use whatever resources they can and to shift, you know, pots of money around to cover off things. And, you know, some boards are trying to find ways to, to shrink class sizes. Some boards are I'm looking at more outdoor education options. I agree with you though. I mean, there's there's so many gaps, particularly like you just mentioned around um, uh, around how, things that impact um, music education and playing. Um, I think that um, one of the things we really have to do is keep the focus on the provincial government because the provincial government holds the purse strings. Mm -hmm. They have the resources and they also set the directives. So boards will keep trying to scramble to figure out ways and and we can impact that but we need to keep pushing the provincial government of the premier and the local conservative mpps and so i would say for folks watching this you know call your if you have a conservative mpp in your riding call them tell them they are letting you down tell them that if schools shut again it's on them um our kids cannot afford another year like last year. And um, there's no excuse at this point. We know what needs to be done and what could be done. And the only thing missing is the political will. Yeah, totally agree. Um, and that is a great um, piece of advice for parents. Definitely call your MPPs. Um, you have the power with your vote, you know. Um, it is unfortunately the end of this video, but that means we sorry this zoom call yeah, <laughs> yeah. but that means we'll be, be oh my god we will be moving into the fast five are you ready all right so i have to respond fast too right okay yeah okay i'm gonna try go ahead all right question number one what is your favorite movie soundtrack 
the soundtrack to the film Magnolia because it's built all around Amy Mann's songs and they are beautiful. Awesome. I haven't heard it yet, but I will definitely look that up after. <laughs> what is an instrument you wish you played? Uh, guitar. Um, I learned flute, but it is really hard to bring a flute out at a party. And I wish I could play something that everybody could sing along to. Mm -hmm. Good choice. <laughs> um, do you have any hidden talents? I do some pretty mean Eminem uh, in karaoke, I've been told. Like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, question number four. What is a favorite concert you attended or your favorite song? Um, okay, favorite concert, um, Buffy St. Marie. I was maybe five years old. It was at a student center at the Memorial, Memorial University of Newfoundland with my parents and my best friend, Grady. And she sang us the Sesame Street song because everybody else in the audience, I suspect, was really stoned. So... <laughs> Played for us. I mean, I remember her telling us that. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was a highlight for me. And also, I love Buffy St. Marie. Mm -hmm. She's great. She was great. Um, and question number five Who was your musical inspiration you listened to growing up or your favorite musical artist? Oh, um, well, I'm a kid of the 80s, you know, so it was like six simple minds, I don't know, sex pistols, everything. But, but I will say, my parents, um, really were instilled a deep love of Joni Mitchell in me mm -hmm. early on. And I, get, I guess at heart, I'm a bit of a hippie, a hippie kid. So <laughs> Joni Mitchell, uh, and particularly her blue album is uh, one of my absolute favorites. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if I'm rocking out, it's probably to The Weeknd or Prince or something like that now. Oh, I love Prince. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much for answering those. Um, and thank you so much again for speaking with me today. Um, I had a great time and can't wait to speak with you sometime soon again. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you. It was great talking to you. Those were great, great questions. And uh, I hope everybody watching has a good first week back at school. Me too. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you heard, you can learn more about our organization at bandology.ca, which features information about music education, advocacy and research, and our play a gig and band camp programs. Follow us on social media for more videos, performance and interviews on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube.